Welcome to another video from Lockdown Electronics with me Bill and this time we've got yet more digital electronics I do love it uh, we're going to take a look at multiplexers this time a very important um, uh, family of, uh, of circuitry um, you'll find plenty of multiplexers uh, all around us in the modern world so we're going to build a multiplexer using discrete gates and then we'll look at a, a single package multiplexer device and uh, just explore how these things uh, actually work in practice. So let's start with a little bit of background to multiplexers and the first circuit. A few general words on multiplexers then before we get uh, into the electronics. Uh, essentially they're devices that select an output from two or more inputs. You can think of them as a, a multi-way selector switch, uh, although in this case the output is controlled um, using a number of logic lines. Uh, and there's many applications in computing and communication um, to name but a few uh, quite a lot of trains here in the UK uh, the locomotives are remotely controlled from cabs at either end using uh, mul multiplexed information and there's lots of use made of multiplexers on uh, on signaling and communication systems on the railways here as well but lots and lots of things make use of it so they're important um, devices and they're everywhere Right, um, let's have a look at uh, a fairly basic 4 to 1 multiplexer and I'm going to try and uh, build one from logic gates. So here's the intended circuit and I'll label up the gates there for you just as a reminder. So in the centre we've got four three input AND gates and the outputs of those AND gates feed a four input OR gate. Um, so we've got four inputs, I've called them A, B, C and D and we've got two uh, select inputs 0 and 1 and those two lines allow you um, to select uh, the four outputs so we could be 0 0 0 1 1 0 or 1 1 so in other words bin binary 0 to 3 and that uh, obviously selects the output so if you want to um, sit quietly and work out um, how the lines are arranged then I'm sure you that'll um, that'll probably be quite a good uh, activity to induce sleep um, but I think the key thing to remember here is that um, the output for many of those AND gates will only ever be high if all three inputs are high so if we've got a pulsing signal coming in on input A if the other two inputs of the AND gates aren't, aren't also high then the output will remain low so we select one or other of the AND gates and we're making use of the OR gate there to combine the four um, signals and uh, any of the inputs uh, which have an output will be selected by the OR gate and will go to the output. I um, hope that makes sense um, and the three chips we're going to make use of here um, CMOS 4000 series chips, uh, a 4049 which has got six inverters on it, uh, 4073 which is a triple three input AND gate and the 4072 which is a dual four input OR gate. So with that um, schematic in mind we'll have a look at um, how it's arranged on the breadboard and what I've not included there are uh, pull down resistors, uh, some decoupling capacitors and a uh, couple of other things so uh, we'll see those uh, on the breadboard. Okay here's the breadboard and a uh, fairly complex layout um, this took quite a while um, to put together. I had to arrange it very carefully and just take my time and be methodical about it. And if you're thinking, oh, well, that's all right, just copy what you've done, Bill, you're potentially missing a um, good learning opportunity there because um, I really had to think about this and it really made me think about the arrangement of the chips. Um, you could do that too. You don't have to copy this exactly. OK, a few additional things on there. Um, firstly, I've just numbered up the uh, chips for you. You can see the 4072 on the right, but the other ones aren't quite so easy to see, so I've just put the chip numbers at the bottom. We've got I've got four capacitors there across the um, supply rails, um, which are just to um, try and clean up the noise a little bit. And the only thing to note is on the 4049 at the left, um, the positive supply is not on the top left pin it's actually elsewhere on the bottom left pin um, it confused me too um, got a couple of 
uh, pull down resistors these are 10k pull down resistors on the two um, select lines and the two blue jumpers near those um, lines are just I just use those to select either um, uh, well I plug them into positive supply and it'll pull up the the input uh, the four other jumpers there's a red a blue and two whites they bring in the, the four inputs the A B C and D and then I've got um, on the extreme right there I've got a the output from the uh, OR gate uh, to a blue LED with its uh, associated current limiting resistor just at the top right there um, and just a few more things to note um, uh, I've tied all the inputs of the NOT gate high um, you can see that over on the left hand side and I've tied all the inputs to the AND and the OR gates low. Uh, tying the NOT gates inputs high means the outputs will be low and tying the inputs to the AND and the OR gates low means the outputs will also be low so I'm just uh, I'm trying to keep down uh, the noise there remembering that there is of course uh, a spare unused gate on all, all three of those right hand chips and there are actually four unused gates on the left hand chip okay um, I think that's pretty much everything there so let's now have a look at what that looks like on the breadboard okay here's the uh, arrangement on the breadboard as you've just seen just now on the slides so we've got not and 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 or uh, the output of the OR gate is going to this blue LED here. That LED uh, down on the right hand side is just an indication that there's this power reaching, reaching this breadboard. Um, and these two blue jumpers here, currently I've got them uh, in the uh, zero uh, power supply rail, um, are the two, uh, if you like, control inputs. I called them S0 S, uh, and S1 before, and those are the uh, ones we either take um, low or high to select which output and then these four jumpers coming in here uh, are four signals and I've actually got four signals from the output of a, a binary counter and I'm going to feed the binary counter with um, uh, my signal generator so we've just got um, four different um, uh, speeds of, of waveform if you like that we can hopefully easily see uh, on the LED just to illustrate the, the way that the um, the multiplexing circuit actually works so I'm going to power up um, so powers come on as we can see bottom right there and I'm now going to uh, enable the signal generator so we should get uh, some kind of result straight away yep there we go so that's um, that's showing you uh, the output um, of the multiplexer at the moment and I've got both S0 and S1 uh, selected 0 so that's um, the the in this case it's the highest frequency but it wouldn't matter what order you put them in so currently it says zero zero let's now change that to zero one and you hopefully see that that's a, a different speed of pulse um, because I'm picking up another um, step off the counter so let's just go back to zero zero there's zero zero so that's pretty fast zero one is a little bit faster and if I go back to zero zero and then go to one zero, uh, you can see that it's uh, slower still. So we are using these two lines to select the speed of the output. So zero one, uh, that's zero zero, and one zero there. So there you go. That's um, a rather nice four to one implementation of a multiplexer. Let's now um, turn. A slightly easier way uh, to implement this kind of thing okay well that's a four into one multiplexer built with discrete gates and quite a high chip count to build um, just one multiplexer yes I appreciate there's a little bit of spare capacity but we there isn't enough spare capacity to build um, another gate from that so we would need more chips so let's look at a chip which gives us eight into one uh, multiplexing facility in a single package and that in this case is the 74LS151 uh, or maybe you're going to make use of the 74HC151 uh, I happen to have the uh, old-fashioned version in my junk and integrated circuits box so that's the one I'm going to be using 
Okay, let's take a look at uh, how this uh, 74LS or HC whatever 151 actually works. This is a 8 to 1 multiplexer in a single package. So we've got a 16 pin dual inline package, um, relatively straightforward arrangement. Uh, we've got eight, uh, the eight input lines marked in red there. We've got an enable, um, uh, and I'll explain that a little bit further in a moment when we look at the internal circuit diagram. We've got three select lines, and then we've got two outputs, um, output on pin six and uh, the inverse of the output on, on pin five. So here's a truth table, and appreciate that's fairly um, sort of mind-bending to look at at a glance. You don't need to worry too much about it, but uh, the left-hand column is the enable pin, so you need to keep that low, and providing you keep that low, the arrangement of S2, 1 and S0 uh, will influence uh, what which input uh, is routed to the output. Um, and uh, the right-hand column really just makes the point that there's outputs, um, two outputs, uh, there's uh, bar Z and Z which are on pins um, 5 and 6. So internally um, this circuit now ought to look slightly familiar. Um, essentially what we've got is double of the circuit that we've just built with using gates um, and the difference being the AND gates have now got four inputs and the additional input there is just being used for that uh, enable. Um, so if that wasn't there, you could use um, three input AND gates if you so wish. But there's the ability there, um, using logic, to turn on and off the uh, output uh, of the multiplexer. Uh, they feed into an eight input OR gate. Um, and actually it's an eight input NOR gate on there. And there's um, then there's the output Z and bar Z. Um, and hopefully because that's a NOR gate you now get to understand why um, there's an inverter on one of the pins should you require uh, the opposite output from the input. If you don't uh, want that you can use um, the, the, the straight through output from that, from that NOR gate. Um, so Logic has now got three lines instead of two, um, but otherwise that chip uh, essentially is a sort of a larger version of the uh, device that we've built on on the breadboard just now. So we'll we'll go across to the breadboard and have a look at the chip in action. I don't propose to show you a photograph of the breadboard. Uh, what you're going to be seeing essentially is that chip uh, with eight lines coming in um, where the red markers are there on the left. Uh, I'm going to use three jumpers to select 0, 1 and 2 uh, and I'm just going to take the output from, from Z and the E uh, or enable pin on pin 7. I'm just going to tie that low so it's um, it's permanently enabled the output. Right, let's go and play electronics on the breadboard. Okay, so um, I want to show you um, the whole of the circuit I'm using to provide some inputs for the multiplexer here. So. I'm going to show you the whole breadboard. You can ignore this bit. Those are the two um, 74LS191 binary counters. I've done a video about these and I've got two of them cascaded together to produce me uh, an 8-bit uh, counting output there which are illustrated by those eight LEDs. And the bit we're interested in today is this chip down here. That's the uh, 8 to 1 multiplexer and I've got its enable uh, tied low as already uh, mentioned and we've got, uh, in fact you can just see the jumper there going across to tie the um, uh, enable pin low and uh, this is a current limiting resistor feeding uh, an LED which will just show us the state of the output uh, and then we've got S0, 1, 2 and 3 which I can simply move between uh, logic uh, 0 and 1 by moving them from the, uh, from the 0 or the positive uh, supply rail. So I'm going to put the signal generator on and I'm going to start at a very modest 10 hertz. So here we go. Um, so first thing to note is that, yeah, OK, that's the clock speed coming in. But remember, the first bit of division is, is divided in half. So that's... Um, those that's the information that's going to get um, 
multiplexed so don't worry too much about the yellow LED and you can see 0 0 0 on the control lines is giving us the same flash rate as the first um, LED of these um, eight counters there so if I now make that 0 0 1 uh, you can hopefully now see we've gone on to the second LED so if I can do me counting be binary counting right let's now go 0 1 0 and we should now be on the the third yeah we're on the third one and then we could go to 0 1 1 which should give us the fourth one and don't look really like it's counting very much now do does it so let's actually be really crazy and go to 1 1 1 which is actually selecting input 8 and that doesn't appear to be working well that's because they ain't lit yet in a moment that will switch on and so will the blue one oh, miracles so let's just um, to convince you that's not just um, a trick of filmmaking let's um, increase this incoming signal to 100 Hertz and you can hopefully now see we're getting something more of a, a sensible flash rate uh, no longer possible to even see the uh, input clock LED flashing or even the um, divide by 2 uh, and if I now go to 1 kilohertz um, most of the first well the first four LEDs you cannot tell they're actually going on and off they are um, you can see these and you can see this one's now flashing at um, a sensible speed and if we, even though it's a breadboard let, let's let's go crazy and let's go up to that that's 10 megahertz uh, sorry 10 kilohertz and at 10 kilohertz that that LED is now um, appears to be on um, completely it isn't if I go back to 5 kilohertz you can see it is flashing so um, that's the multiplexer in action um, even better if I just selected a signal so we go back to 100 Hz which is something a bit more sensible and being able to control whichever output it is you want to pick using the uh, three control lines here you can see uh, the multiplexer is doing the job rather nicely and for completeness sake we've got an 8 to 1 here and you might recall that the um, 4 to 1 uh, was a great deal more complex as a circuit so yeah that is an 8 to 1 multiplexer okay well they have a look at uh, multiplexing um, and we've seen a 4 into 1 and a 8 into 1 then there's plenty of multiplexing chips about uh, although I am acutely aware these days that um, that kind of thing can be implemented by a CPLD or an FPGA or even a microcontroller um, you do find the odd microcontroller on this channel but not very many of them got absolutely nothing against them um, but I want to play with electronics um, I don't want to um, program computers um, I've done that in the past and um, it isn't what uh, I find uh, fun in the electronics hobby so apologies in advance this is all um, ancient history stuff really but it's a flipping good way of learning about electronics so I hope you found it useful um, if you have please click the thumbs up uh, and also if you're not subscribed please consider subscribing the thumbs up and the subscribe are both free um, won't do you any harm at all it will however help the channel enormously and I would really appreciate that thanks very much for watching see you on the next video